compensation is an interesting subject, and I'm going to write about it next year or something. But, you know, it, it, it's not a market system. You can read all you want. I mean, it, you know, the, the, the PR people will tell you, you know, that ex Joe Smith's compensation was determined by a market system, and he's just like a baseball player or anything of the sort. But he's not just like a baseball player. You know, the baseball player negotiates with somebody who's spending his money to hire the baseball player and making a calculation whether he's better off laying out the money out of his own pocket, the owner of the team, uh, to get that player. But when you get a comp committee at a large American corporation, you have somebody with an enormous interest in the amount of comp on one side of the table, and you've got somebody on the other side of the table who was not picked because they were the Doberman of the board, believe me, uh, and who is dealing with what uh, many times is what my friend Tom Murphy would used to call play money. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's almost meaningless to the person on one side of the table whether somebody gets 100,000 shares of restricted stock or a million shares of restricted stock, and it's not meaningless to the guy on the other side of the table. Almost every other negotiation in American business, you have some parity of concern. But you do not have a parity of concern, you know, in terms of the, uh, in terms of comp at the top levels. You have a parity of concern when you get down to labor unions. I mean, the management wants to keep down the prices, and the union wants to get more money, and you know, and and uh, that's a real negotiation. And you have, you know, I mean, you have lots of other real negotiations in American business. But the compensation in many companies, not all, obviously, but but in many many companies has not been a real negotiation at all. And the management has hired comp consultants to come in, and I have never seen a comp consultant come in and say, we ought to reduce this guy's salary. I've also never seen a comp consultant come in and say, why don't you get rid of this bozo? You know, I mean, you know, they can't all be wonderful. But, uh, you know, can you imagine a comp consultant doing that, never getting another assignment? It, you know, it wouldn't happen. So it's, it, it's a bad system, and it needs improvement. And it may be getting a little improvement, and as I wrote in the annual report this year, what happens with comp is the acid test of corporate reform. Because frankly, the CEOs of America, they don't care whether their boards are diverse or not diverse or anything of the sort. They care about how much money they make in, in a great many cases. And, and you, the owners, and big owners in particular, you know, have to provide some countervailing force uh, or you'll have what you've had in the last 20 years, which is an enormous disparity in the rates of compensation of people at the top compared to people at the bottom, and also a disconnect between the comp of people running businesses and the results of the owners who gave them the money. So arise, you know, shareholder. <laughs>